through a multimedia exhibition involving stage photography, theatrical performance, and reflexive cinematography exposed of its technical materiality. Carrie Mae Weems's Constructing History, a Requiem to Mark the Moment, interrogates interlocking systems of domination and creates historical continuity and black subjectivity through actualization of the black historical self. By rendering black subjectivity as a critical, self-reflexive, intellectual force, constitutive of historical constructions, Weems posits blackness as theory, critical in examining the specifics of a historical moment. Through deliberate inclusion of lighting tracks, pedestals, cameras and lamps used on set to create tracking and wide shots, Weems subverts his hegemonic notions of history by positing historical memory his constructed performance as staged and manufactured ideas imbued with meaning in our collective cultural consciousness by hegemonic forces. Weems' piece leads into a self-reflexive trance that centers black subjectivity through interrogating the neoliberal contemporary context of politics and representation in the 2008 presidential race between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. The young students in her constructed classroom act out archetypal historical movements of death, mourning and witness that aid in the actualization of the black historical self. These scenes are posited as a necessary preface to enabling the current historical moment. Weems draws from African diasporic epistemological traditions of embodied knowledge and wisdom to construct a collective cultural memory through his students' stage performances. Theatrical performances imbue a seemingly distant past with a newfound sense of immediacy. Using student bodies as vehicles for interrogating historical moments and constructing meaning generates counter-hegemonic constructions of history in which the corporeal transfer of knowledge connects the past to the present in a personal and visceral way. Moreover, constructions of history that necessitate an interrogation of the self in its present moment and the materiality, positionality, and subjectivity it navigates in relation to others lends this form of history a special significance and proximity unobtainable through hegemonic constructions. The use of a multiplicity of subjectivities in the rendering of these histories actively confronts both the content and the form of the current education system. Instead, the film evokes a vision for the liberatory collective historical consciousness that surpasses constructed notions of human classification. An image of a black woman in deep contemplation of her subject position in relation to this moment in history foregrounds the historical reenactments. Winter imagery symbolizes old age and wisdom in the embodied knowledge of black female subjectivity. The cold stands in for the standstill meditation of situating black female subjectivity within the present historical moment. Snow, as an intermediary between solid ice and fluid rain, functions in conjunction with the mention of the thaw of winter to invoke the liminal space occupied by black subjectivity in the process of actualization of the historical self. These signifiers also allude to the new life of an actualized historical self, one that situates itself in the present moment amid counter-hegemonic constructions of a shared collective cultural memory. Modern renderings of staged historical moments map landscapes of shared collective cultural memory seeped in visual vocabularies, yet resignify them in the context of the present news and following thoughts in question. What does the election of a black man to presidency of the United States mean for black subjectivity today, and for the US empire that upholds hierarchical power relations at the intersections of race, gender, class, and other manufactured forms of human classification? Moreover, how does the hegemonic construction of history establish and influence our understanding of the present and our position within it? In centering black female subjectivity in her piece, 
Weems denaturalizes the narratives of sorrow associated with and ascribed to black bodies. She instead turns toward black creative intellectual countercurrents that radically reimagine the socio-historical location of black subjectivity and directly interrogate the interlocking systems of domination that manufacture hegemonic narratives of black subjectivity as confined to corporeal life. In this way, Weems posits that the actualization of the black historical self is a means to liberation from the white imagination, which often forms the basis for hegemonic representations of blackness. Moreover, in staging the physical space for reflection by the black female protagonist, Weems leverages architectural structure to disembody normative dualisms from the meaning-making process under black subjectivity. The two windows that background the stage represent knowledge that is situated outside the self, and in this way, looking out the window signifies hegemonic epistemological notions of knowledge acquisition, in which one turns toward the external world for truth. However, within the enclosed, insular space of the self, the tensions and contradictions of normative dualisms manifest, beg to be teased out and complicated in truth, becomes a subjective construction that is not single-handedly evoked by any one thing external to the self. This highly aestheticized and staged scene posits that to interrogate history through the complexity of the self is to see the futility in attempting to construct history through normative dualisms. By having the black subject turned away from the windows in the process of self-actualizing her historical self, Weems comments on the importance of drowning out the hegemonic voices, internalized through socialization and hegemonic education and epistemological practices. In this way, she employs physical architecture in its placing in relation to black subjects to subvert dualistic architectures of power. When discussing the assassinations of Medgar Evers, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, Kent State students and millions of Jews, Weems highlights a white man on a pedestal holding a gun as of contemplating his actions. Rather than use black bodies to represent black physical death, Weems derails public consciousness by turning away from the libidinal economy of black death to focus instead on white supremacy and its agenda of perpetuating this black death. History constructed through a black feminist lens does not necessitate representations of black suffering because this knowledge is encapsulated in embodied knowledge. It does not need repeating. Weems depicts a black man holding a briefcase in one hand and cradling a massive metal ball in the other, alluding to the transfer of accountability and consequence to the black persons from the hegemonic players and thus providing a visual to Du Bois theory of double consciousness and the self-other dialectic. By including the historical events in Japan and Pakistan, Weems highlights the neocolonial imperialist role of the United States through its military and political interventions and thus confronts the conventional world history taught in classrooms. By lending visibility to the human hand that attends the construction of hegemonic narratives and associations attached to historical moments, Weems subverts ontological constructions that render black bodies solely as categories for experience and move toward black creative construction of space and place on a historical continuum. Weems creates a sense of fortitude and renewal through historical grounding of the black subject. The self-actualization of black subjectivity's historical self restores continuity to radical black subjectivity and liberates it from the white imagination.